Direct from the Broski Nation headquarters in Los Angeles, California, this is the Broski Report with your host, Brittany Broski. Hey team, welcome back to another fucking episode of the Broski Report. Guys, episode 17, let's hear it for episode 17. Mr. Cobbs with that bell. <laughs> let's hear it for Thursday, sailors. Ahoy, sailors, it be Tuesday. <laughs> I just woke up like 15 minutes ago and I'm woman enough to admit that you are getting, um, uh, EP, <laughs> you are getting EP. This is like, um, hold on. What's the thing that girls do with their boyfriends where they're like, they like infantilize them when they're like, he's just EP. He's a 30 year old man, by the way. That's literally me. That's me to myself. I wake up, I'm like, she's just EP. <laughs> Shut up. Okay. Some things to address. Um, we have a new addition to the set, guys. So if you'll direct your attention here, and for audio listeners, just imagine, I guess. We've got Bobblehead Funko Pop Kylo Ren to my left. We've got Bobblehead Funko Pop Mandalorian fixed with Baby Yoda, I believe. Yes, Baby Yoda in tow. Sorry, Grogu. And now in the middle, introducing this cute little thing my friend Luke got me that says, caution, president at work. How silly is that? That is so silly. Caution, president at work. That's literally me. Oh my God. You should say caution, uh, supreme leader at work. Caution. Uh, what's the word? <laughs> caution dictator at work all right so just wanted to introduce this because you know hopefully my goal by the the end of season one of this podcast is that i'm just gonna have shit all over the desk you're gonna be like it's gonna be hard trying to see me because i have so many funko pops and figurines and dragons and mickey mouses and and shit all over the desk so this is one of many additions so just be forewarned We've also got Mickey over here still with the nuke codes and I have not, uh, we might reach a point today where I have got to call in the airstrikes because we've got a lot to talk about. First and foremost, uh, let's start with my songs of the week. Okay. Because I forget to do this every week. So I need to put you guys on now, uh, before you're too bored at the end. And if you get bored listening to this podcast, you need to get fucking brain checked because there's no, I don't even know where when I start it, where it's going to go. And I'm always astounded where it ends up. So just, you know, get that together. Okay, guys, if you're bored listening to this, I don't know what to tell you. First song of the week, Cold Hard Steel and Sand by Braxton Keith. Now, what do y'all know about Braxton Keith? He's a new, he's a new little boy on the scene. Not little boy. <laughs> so why did I say little boy? He's a new young gentleman on the scene. He's a country singer. He's from Texas and he can't be more than 22, 23. Like he is so young and he came out with this song and I'll be honest, it's not like the rest of his discography, which I was kind of like, damn, like this is kind of a standout song. I'm, I'm bopping it every day. This song is so good. And I did DM him. <laughs> I did DM him and say, when are you coming to Los Angeles, California? And he said, I don't know if people know who I am out there. And I said, well, I do shit. I do come on over. Literally come over. Come on, y'all. Next song is Kentucky Rain by Elvis. Of course. Kentucky Rain by Elvis. Kentucky Rain by Elvis, of course. Like, of course. I love this song. This song is so good. Kentucky Rain is one of like my top five Elvis songs of all time. It's up there with Love Me, Trouble, if I can dream, obviously, uh, it's now or never, call me, kiss me, my darling, and be mine tonight, tomorrow will seem to play, it's now or never. That song is so good, too. Okay, it's now or never is in my top five. Okay, now I guess we have to talk about it because y'all have been waiting long enough and I have I have a preliminary 
opinion, okay? And of course, I'm about to be talking about Hosier, so strap in. Strap in and strap on, team, because we're talking about Hosier. First Light is one of the best songs I've ever heard, maybe. Abstract Psycho, Psycho Pump? Psycho Pump is my favorite song on the album. And I'll talk about it in detail. Give me like, give me a few minutes here. These two songs have been simply on repeat. I've listened to the album all the way through probably like three, four times. I really, like of course, as a body of work, conceptually, lyrically, sonically, it's a, I, I, Okay, well, this is actually, maybe I'm asking this question more so. Do y'all think it's his magnum opus? And magnum opus, for those that don't know what that means, is like his greatest work of all. Magnum magnum opus meaning a large and important work of art, music, or literature, especially one regarded as the most important work of an artist or writer. I don't think that this is his magnum opus. I think that, honestly, Wasteland Baby might be. But I'm still getting used to Unreal Unearth because there are some people are already drawing similarities of like this song is the, you know, track three of Wasteland Baby. Like there's there's comparisons both sonically and also kind of the role that the song plays in the album track list, you know, like how it's kind of either a transition from one song to another or they uh flow into each other or one's kind of a high point and one's like a really slow ballad. And um, I'm kind of drawing those comparisons too, but I don't know. It's taking me a second because all of the singles he released, Eat Your Young, All Things End, Francesca, all of them were so good. And then I kept being like, how the fuck is he going to top this? Unknown, Inth, obviously it's, it's up there. Abstract, up there. Uh, this this will be part two up there. This will be part one up there. I mean, the whole album is so good, but I have such a, I think I have such a spiritual and, and it's not even nostalgia. It's like, um, a personal connection to Wasteland Baby that I, I'm having a hard time moving on from it. (laughs) Maybe that's what it is. Like I'm having a hard time not letting it go, but letting it be its own body of work and not like my favorite Hosier album. So anyway, I, I talked about Abstract, which is, uh, it's, it's this track list. So it's this song, Abstract, Psycho Pump, okay? And now, when I first read this, I was like, why does that sound familiar? I've heard this term before. I've heard the term Psycho Pump before. And I was like, I know that it has something to do with um, travel. It has something to do with travel. And so I Googled it and I did some research. And I'm so fucking smart, bitch. I am so smart. A psychopomp is a, a almost spirit guide that leads a spirit or a person or an animal or, or anything from one phase of life into another, uh, most usually from life to death. And Hosier tells the story of uh, kind of the inspiration for this song was as a child, he saw an animal uh, dying in the road, like it got hit by a car or, or it was it was dying. And someone pulled over, just a stranger, and went to comfort the animal and try to help the animal kind of in its last moments. And for some reason that really stuck with him as a child. And so <clears throat> this idea of that human was that animal's psychopomp in that moment, kind of there to hold the hand metaphorically of the spirit that is about to start its transition from one phase of life into potentially the afterlife or wherever we go. And I think lyrically and conceptually, it is so smart because he's describing this experience that he lived through of watching that, of, of how in the end, that sort of empathy and compassion, that creature is dying. You know, it won't remember it. It won't remember that last act of compassion or just, I am here with you as you go from this point A to point B. But what a human thing and what a, what a beautiful thing. And Hosier, therefore, in writing this, is sort of acting as our spirit guide, our hand that we're holding through the album track list, I think, or through life. Because I think for a lot of... Um, 
Hosier fans, there's kind of this comparison of the first, second, and third album. The first album is kind of um, um, airy. The second album is water. And then the third album is earth. And so also fire. <laughs> Wait, where? how does fire go into it? Hold on, I have to look up the track list for uh, self-titled. Yeah, in the woods somewhere, run, sedated, to be alone. All these songs are so good. Um, yeah, there's kind of this like <clears throat> travel through the elements sort of thing going on. And we've landed from Wasteland Baby, even the album cover was underwater and it has to do with, you know, movement and sunlight and how water refracts sunlight and all of these things. And now with Unreal on Earth, with even the album cover, we're in the dirt, we're underground. We died, right? Or, or we're reflecting on what happens after that second album. And of course, what I've talked about before is the album is inspired by Dante's Inferno and I that episode where I got high and I did the Nine Circles of Hell. <coughs> if you haven't watched that, go watch that one. That was a fun little, uh, I don't remember anything, by the way. But that was the inspiration for this album is post-death, those Nine Circles of Hell and, and what each layer is reserved for where Hosier maybe uh, is taking us. Like, why are we going through through all nine of them, you know? But with abstract, let's look up the lyrics because y'all know I love this shit. The speed that you moved, the script. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Here are the lyrics for abstract, some of the lyrics. The speed that you moved, the screech of the cars, the creature still moving that slowed in your arms, the fear in its eyes gone out in an instant, your tear caught the light, the earth from a distance. I just got a chill. <laughs> just got a chill. My leg hair just stood up. <clears throat> see how it shines. See how it shines. And so a lot of this is like, obviously it's up to the listener's interpretation. See how it shines. Is that sort of this, the wetness of the dying animal on the road? Is it the rain that they're caught in while all this is happening? See how it shines. Is it the tear on the stranger's face cr mourning the loss of this life that they tried to save, but inevitably we can't save each other. Everyone has to die eventually. But I think the humanness of it is we're going to try because to exist all together and to enjoy each other's company, even, even acknowledging how precious this fleeting life is even just the motion of, of trying to comfort this creature. Oh my God. So see how it shines. Is it human nature shining? You know, see how it shines. Is this the spirit guide shining? Is there a light being emitted from the spirit guide or is there a light being emitted from the creature as it passes from one realm to another? I just have chills. I love those here. There's so many ways that you could take this. Sometimes there's a thought like you choose what you're doing, but it comes to naught when I look back through it. I remember the view, streetlights in the dark blue, the moment I knew I had no choice but to love you. Like, fuck you. The memory hurts, but does me no harm. The memory hurts, but does me no harm. Your hand in my pocket to keep us both warm. The poor thing in the road, its eyes still glistening. The cold wet of your nose, the earth from a distance. See how it shines. <laughs> I love him! The fuck? Now we're going to look up Unknown's lyrics. Because he's he is sick. He's sick. Funny how true colors shine in darkness and in secrecy. If there were scarlet flags, they washed out in the mind of me. Where a blinding light shone on you every night and either side of my sleep, where you were held frozen like an angel to me. Fuck you! Fuck you! That's not real! He's not real! I've seen so many interviews where people are like, you know, you were written by a woman. Like, you're the female gaze. You're whatever. And he's like, am I? I don't know. You're a sick fuck. You're a sicko. I love him so much. He needs to be locked away for a very long time. You need to be locked in prison for a very long time. You need the internet taken away from you. You are a danger 
to society. <laughs> That's me, the hose here. When he comes on Mark Zuckerberg's internet, starts posting all this sappy bullshit, get it off. I'm not interested. Not interested. Boo! <laughs> I love him. I love him so much. This episode of the Broski Report is sponsored by SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There's more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more. I'm trying to see Hosier when he comes to LA and tickets are quickly dwindling because I didn't do the pre-sale. But with SeatGeek, each ticket is rated on a scale of one to 10. So look for the green dots because green means good, red means bad. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. Listen, the NBA and NHL playoffs are right around the corner and baseball is also back. There's tons of concerts as well, like Luke Combs, Ed Sheeran, Drake. Everyone's on tour, so you're not gonna wanna miss out. And you know I have a code for you guys because I love you. Use my code BROSKI for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code BROSKI. Make sure to click the link in the description of this episode to download the app. Thanks, SeatGeek! It ain't the being alone. It ain't the empty home. You know I'm good on my own. It's more the being unknown. <sighs> ah! Okay, so beyond that, beyond uh, uh, Abstract being like one of my favorite songs, my favorite, I would argue my favorite song on the album, and then Unknown, and then De Selby 2. Let's look up De Selby 2's lyrics. Is it De Shelby? Am I, Ir am I Irish phobic? Am I irophobic? I want to run against the world that's turning. I'd move so fast that I'd outpace the dawn. I want to be gone. I want to run so far I'd beat the morning. Before the dawn has come, I'd block the sun if you want it done. Oh my God. You want the moon, darling? I'll, I'll tie a lasso around it and I'll give it to you. I'll bring it down to you. That's literally, Hosier, I, if he wasn't Irish, if, if Hosier would stop with the fake Irish accent, I bet he'd talk like this. Well, darling, you know that I'd give you the moon if you asked for it. He would. He has a transatlantic accent. Hosier, if if we freed him from, <laughs> give up the Irish bit, Hosier. We know you're a 1950s transatlantic movie star. What you're given, what you live in, darling, it finds a way to live in you. And your heart, love, has such darkness. I feel it in the corners of the room. He's so spooky. <laughs> Hosier, spooky. Hosier spooky, emotional, not clickbait. Okay, we're gonna move on from Hosier because I can't talk about him for too long. I can't talk about him for too long. I'm gonna get really emotional and I already kind of did. So next week we'll definitely dive into it more because I'll have spent more time with it. It's only been out for like a week and a half. And it took me like, honest to God, five days to be like, okay, I'm gonna sit down because this is what I've been saying of like Wasteland Baby means so much to me and self-titled means so much to me too that I didn't want potentially something to replace it. And I'm afraid that what if I didn't like the new album, which is impossible because I'll like whatever he puts out. But there are like, I have a, a favorite tier system, you know, of, of Hosier works. But I'm, I'm very, very pleased with it. I, I love the album. I just need to spend more time with it because what made me fall in love with Wasteland Baby so much is when I did my sort of lyrical analysis of all the songs and how they all flow together. And um, the sort of solidarity that, that comes with a lot of the music from that album. You know, it's a very forward thinking, politically involved album, one could argue. And uh, I would I would say this one... This one, not so much. This one very much is about love and the afterlife. And I like that too. Not everything has to be political, okay? I love a concept album. Okay, moving on. Uh, if you don't want to hear me talk about Call of Duty, fuck off. Because I have stuff to say. There are developments. Broski Nation, I need you at full attention. There are developments. I need you to stop what you're doing. Hands off the wheel, eyes closed. We have developments. Put some, put some headline news music over this. 
This just in, an Italian ghost cosplayer who also does Star Wars stuff and sounds like ghost made a video directed at me. This was a direct attack on my life. And we're gonna watch it. Brittany, please, please notice me. Please notice me. Now see, I'm not, I'm not trying to do all that. All right. Let's see whatever that was at the end. You lost me. Because at first, at first, I was into it. I was rocking with you at first. And then, and then you had to do that voice at the end. One thing about men, don't try to be funny. Don't try to be funny. I'll do that. Leave the jokes to me. You just stand there and be hot, okay? You don't need to do anything else. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. I'll do the fun. I'll do the jokes, please. Please. Full of God, just stand there. I saw this. You know what's really terrifying is I didn't see this in my mentions on TikTok. This came on my fucking For You page. This came on my For You page and I saw my name and I just about fell out. I just about fell out. And now you know what we're about to do. We're about to stalk him. I love the lightsabers, all right? But do you know what I love the most? Goth girls with big teeth. Okay, see so you lost me again. You lost me! Men are so stupid! Men are so stupid! Just stand there! Just stand there! Just stand there in the ghost cosplay with the fucking lightsaber. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to talk. Please stop talking. Because what you chose to say is that you have a lightsaber and you want a goth girl with big tits. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I have a gun. <laughs> Why did Jeffree Star get a custom made Beretta pistol? <laughs> Why did he do that? Why? There is not one fucking reason why Jeffree Star should have a pistol. A Louis Vuitton pistol. Oh, I'm drooling. See, like, I understand. I understand that, especially with cosplayers on TikTok, there is this need to sort of break up the seriousness of, you know, the character or not taking yourself too seriously while making one of these videos. But I feel like there's a way to do that that's not the fucking... I want a big titty goth girl. Okay, you and everyone else, brother, get in line. But it's like, that's not, that's not the way to do it is like, I don't know, I'm, I'm mad. I'm angry, I just got angry. Uh oh, I'm mad. That's not the way to do it. Just stop, this is my advice to men everywhere. And I hope you guys will kind of spread this gospel. Stop talking. If you have something to say, maybe reel it in. Maybe think twice. What's that thing? Is this, before you speak, think. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? I'm gonna, every, every woman in a relationship should print out this image and like put it on the fucking wall. Like we're in a kindergarten classroom to remind every man. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring, necessary, and kind? If the answer is no, you don't have to say it. You don't have to say it. I'm gonna make this my profile picture. I'm gonna start posting like half naked thirst traps and then halfway through when I'm about to go full on nudie, it's just gonna pop up with this. I'm gonna post my naked body and right before we get down to nippies, it's gonna be this image. <laughs> It's just gonna green screen pop up silent. And then it's gonna make people reflect. Why the fuck were you? What are you doing, team? Hey, chiller. What's up, my beast? What's up, beast? What are you doing? I saw this TikTok where this guy was like, I'm bringing back like 2010 hype beast pet names. And I'm really into that. He said, uh, like I said, chiller. What the fuck is up, chiller? That's a great one. Beast, like you're, oh, you went beast on that. <laughs> you went beast mode on that, my brother. So that's the takeaway. Before you speak, think. 
Today's episode is sponsored by Newly. Fall is here, and I am excited to put together some stunning and gorgeous outfits with the help of Newly. Newly is a subscription clothing rental service that's all about helping you have fun and get creative with your style. Renting from Newly every month lets me bring nice pieces into my wardrobe, like that quiet luxury stuff, like tailored blazers, chunky knits, formal dresses, all without dropping serious cash. For just 98 bucks a month, you get your choice of any six styles each month. You get to choose whatever you want to rent for whatever you have going on. It's totally up to you. You have access to thousands of styles from more than 400 brands. Everything from party dresses to premium denim to one-of-a-kind vintage pieces. Newly carries labels like Free People, Selkie, Farm Rio, Anthropology, Eloquai, Madewell, you name it. There's inclusive sizing up to 5X as well as petite and maternity. You get fast free shipping and returns and professional cleaning in Newly's state-of-the-art laundering facility. You get the option to buy what you love, sometimes up to 70% off. And you get savings. Renting from Newly means getting to wear more while spending less. You can curb that... I have to buy something new feeling you get when there are events on the calendar while still feeling confident and excited about your wardrobe. And it's fun. Newly gives you everything you need to get inspired, get creative, and explore your style without making commitments. Free your closet of impulse purchases and skip the buyer's remorse by renting instead. Newly lets you love fashion in a way that's kinder to the planet. Orders are shipped in recycled, recyclable, and reusable totes with no plastic packaging. Let's go! Clothes are cleaned using energy and water-efficient methods, and styles are repaired rather than thrown out. Newly is a great value at 98 bucks a month for any six styles, but right now you can get $20 off your first month of Newly when you sign up with the code BROSKI20. Just go to N-U-U-L-Y.com, that's Newly with two U's, and enter the code BROSKI20, sign up to get 20 bucks off your first month. That's N-U-U-L-Y.com, Newly with two U's, with my code BROSKI20. Newly subscription clothing rental, change your clothes. Okay, yes, I talk. I do have the ability to talk, but this is my cat. His name is Loki, and I love him. Okay. Oh, so I really love goth girls. See, again with the shit. Stop talking. You could have just been like, this is my cat. All right. <laughs> what does he say? How copy? This is Loki. How copy? He didn't have to do all that. Men need to be electroshocked into good behavior. Inquisitor, Inquisitor, you have so much potential. Inquisitor, listen to me. Hold my hand. You have so much potential. Don't let it be wasted. Don't let it be for naught. Do not disappoint me. Go. He's so cute. (laughs) His voice is so cute. And he's Italian. Uh, I wish Italy was real. Okay, so, right. So why did he say men and females, right? That's about to piss me off. So uh, anyway, Inquisitor, you you have some work to do, but I give you, I'm going to rate you six out of 10, okay? Six out of 10 overall. I like the basis of what you're doing, but some behavior needs to be uh, adjusted. Now, this is my favorite. Raven is my favorite Call of Duty cosplayer, dude. Okay. Raven is my favorite. We can go I need her. I don't give a fuck, dude. (laughs) Okay. Now this is using a Last of Us audio. So immediately, I'm tuned in. Immediately, I'm plugged in. Okay? Not her, you know. What? Maria told me about Sarah. Ellie? You are treading on some mighty thin ice here. I'm sorry about your daughter, Joel. But I have lost people, too. You have no idea what loss is. Everyone I have cared for has either died or left me. Everyone fucking except for you. So don't tell me that I would be safer with someone else because the truth is I would just be more scared. You're right. 
You're not my daughter. So the lore here. <laughs> okay, so the lore. <laughs> let me let me catch you up. Okay, because you bitches don't understand that was an art piece. <laughs> you bitches don't understand that was a fucking art piece. The lore. <laughs> I just had that moment again where I was like, "What the fuck am I doing? I'm sh- I'm sharing something." <laughs> deep so deep within me that i'm getting embarrassed but there's no turning back now if you're an audio listener let me explain what the caption said okay so that's obviously an audio from the last of us where joel is about to leave uh ellie at like leave ellie with uh what his brother or something like that or no 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 leave Ellie somewhere and Joel was going to go look for his brother, something like that. And Ellie was like, everyone always leaves me. Like everyone I've ever loved just left me. And then obviously Joel's daughter got killed, uh, got shot by uh, Fedra. And so (laughs) ghost in this scenario. (laughs) Okay. Stay with me. Stay with me guys. All right. You're veering off. You got to come back in, come back into the lane. We're still, we're still here. Okay. We're still in ghost (laughs) duty cosplay. Okay. Um, ghost, you were, (laughs) you were ghosts, uh, girlfriend, wife, partner, or something like that. Okay. And Ellie, the Ellie character, I don't know. It's probably ghost, like teammate is teasing ghost about like, oh, I've lost people too. And ghost is like, you have no fucking idea what loss is because he lost your name. Okay. He lost Y slash N and it, it, he never recovered. Okay. He's a shell of who he was. (laughs) Because he lost your name. It's fan fiction. And then and then the character, the rookie's like, ghost teammate, the rookie's like, yeah, well, duh, duh, and shoves him. And then and then Raven, oh. <laughs> she's like, acts like someone shoved her. She's a good little actress. I'll tell you something. The first time I saw Raven, I didn't, I didn't know she was a girl. And I was like, that's fucking period. And she's hot. Hold on. Let me pull up another one. He has a girlfriend. I don't see her. Turn around. (laughs) Now you see her. It's something about this tickles the fiber of the mask kink for me. (laughs) You can see them smiling under the mask, but you can't see their face. Something about that makes me tingle. Something about that really freaks me out. Okay. When, when, uh, I realize how attracted I am to that. And then I'm like, this is not, uh, normal or good or acceptable. I would say it's so bad. It's to the point I see like a motorcyclist on the freeway. Like I'll be driving. I'll look over and there'll be just like a dude in a motorcycle helmet. I, hey, I'm not, I'm not looking at the road anymore. My, my head's like this. <laughs> I'm going 90 miles an hour with my head at a fucking 90 degree. But I'm looking straight at him until, until he pull, pulls forward, pulls, <laughs> until he pulls forward. Ew! What are we drinking tonight? Absolutely gorgeous. Did you know Danielle Walsh does stand up? For praise tonight. <laughs> it's the weekend, so let me show you what we're drinking. I cheated, I've already had one, but we'll say nothing because it is beaut. So we're starting AU Pineapple Vodka. Because I mean, what's free drinks without vodka? So as much, so much vodka. As much or as little as you want, there's no judgment. For Loco Traffic. Vodka for Loco, and I think she's gonna add another vodka on top. And we're gonna top it off with twisted sour fruit shots because I mean vodka for loco and shots is obviously the perfect that is potion (laughs) that what she's holding in her hand is fucking potion because I mean vodka for loco and shots that is potion (laughs) what the fuck it's obviously the perfect there's not a single drop of like juice or water. It is straight up alcohol. Drink, right? Happy freaking weekend. Let's try it. Oh, 
absolutely gorgeous. Like someone called Gavin from Autoglass. Hey, what did she say? Hey, what did she say at the end? Gorgeous. Like someone called Gavin from Autoglass. Hey, what? <laughs> Sorry? Come again? Gorgeous. Like someone called Gavin from Autoglass. <laughs> huh? I'm going out with you, Annika. Gorgeous. I need to meet her. I need to have a fucking espresso martini with her. I actually, you know, the way she makes these looks so delicious. Like, I can't even sit here and lie. Like, with the colored ice, the, um, the different, like, color combinations of the liquor, because it's always, like, peach, raspberry, vodka. Yeah. Gorgeous. Is that Scottish or... or Irish. What's the one part of Ireland that sounds Scottish? Because it was settled by Scots. Or they like, they like took it over. Why does the Northern Irish accent sound Scottish? Scots, Irish Gaelic, 17th century English, and Hiberno English, the variety of English spoken throughout Ireland, have all influenced the development of Northern Irish English. And this mixture explains the very distinctive hybrid that has emerged. I think it is Northern Ireland. There's something in Northern Ireland that sounds... Ooh. Here we go. Quora. Quora with the fucking answers. Let's go. So the question is, how do you tell a Northern Ireland accent from a Scottish one? And Peter Garrett, who lives in Ireland, says, all accents are part of a, con of, of a continuum. And that is so true. In Ireland, accents in the far south, such as Cork and Kerry, are very different from the accents of Northern Ireland. Cork and Kerry accents are like, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> what the actual fuck are you saying? <clears throat> Nevertheless, as you progress from the far south up the west and east coast or throughout the Midlands, the accents in each district will be similar to those in the adjoining areas. The accents of Northern Ireland and the other counties of Ulster are strongly influenced by Scottish accents, indeed the Scots language. In particular, the sound often represented in English as oo is pronounced at the front of the mouth, like saying e with rounded lips. In many other languages, these two sounds are distinct. For instance, roos and what? For instance, roos and ruse are pronounced differently in French. Oh, I don't speak French, but in English, it's either one or the other. Okay, I need, I need an example. The pronunciation of words ending in the O-W sound is sometimes different. In Northern Ireland, it's often pronounced as I or I. So cow is like cow, cow. Wait, how do they say it? Not, not, wait, how do they say it? I know it in my head. Right now. <laughs> no, that's Australian. Whereas now is nigh. R right now. And brown becomes brine. She's Northern Irish. I promise you that. Irish Belfast. I am so smart. I am so smart. Where the fuck is Belfast? Stop! I'm American. Oh my God, there's an Ikea in Belfast. Belfast is not close to Dublin. How sad that Londonderry is literally called that. Why did they, why did they have to call it Londonderry? Where is those here from? <laughs> Bray, Ireland. Ireland. Bray County Wicklow. The son of Rain Hosier Byrne, an artist in John Byrne. A local blues drummer who had a day job working at a bank. Was that good? He grew up near Delgany, County Wicklow. What the fuck is Delgany? Delgany. Oh, that's like south of Dublin. <clears throat> oh, he's like right on the water. That is so real of him. Sherlock's Lane. Okay, now I'm just having fun on Google Maps. I need to get back to what I was talking about. How did I ever go from talking about Raven, my favorite cosplayer, to Danielle Walsh? You know, she does stand up and it's good. Dun turn. There it is. Co. No. Down turn. Pink get done. <laughs> That's Scottish. He's Scottish. Pink get done. That guy who's talking about, I feel like sometimes I'm speaking a different language for the people that aren't chronically on TikTok the way I am or chronically online in general. 
there's a video of a, a Scottish creator who's so hot and I don't know if he's gay or not talking about how pink is always like at her concerts suspended from things. Like why is she doing somersaults above the crowd? Get down, get on stage. And so he made this video like pink, get down. But his accent's so thick. People just like, it's now a thing. People make fun of him. Not make fun of him, but like they quote. But that's different than, cause she would probably say down. I've been there a few weeks and my boss, Dee, hello Dee. I told Dee I was fluent in French. <laughs> Bonjour, comme si, comme ça, très bien, merci, uh, oui, oui. <laughs> Don't speak a word of it. A few weeks later, Dee rings me. Danielle, know the way you're fluent in French? I said, oh, oui, oui, Dee. <laughs> Great, there's a French tour booked in. Come down, I need you down to do it. I had an R to learn how An R. Okay, so she's talking about how she works at this like pedal bike pub uh, sometimes. And that she told her boss that she speaks French. And that's all. I'd become fluent French. <laughs> I get stern and every single one of these French people were French. <laughs> What's the chances? She's like funny. I'm like, I have an R, an R, not understanding one word. So I says, Felder Jack Daniels. That's Jack Daniels. And just keep shouting, Pidal, Pidal, Pidal. That's paddle in French. I think it is anyway. I'm obsessed with her. I'm obsessed with her. An R? Wow. Today's episode of The Brosk Report is sponsored by Tinder. Tinder is the world's most popular dating app. So many possibilities really are just a match away and it starts with a swipe. On Tinder, you have the most opportunities to find whatever it is you're looking for. And let's talk about how hot transparency can be, how hot communication can be, guys. With Tinder's latest feature, Relationship Goals, you set your status on your profile to show others what type of connections you are actually looking for, and you can see what others are looking for. No more guessing. Not only does Tinder give you complete control, but they also have the most safety features than any other dating app. Tinder has features like block contact or block profile, which allows you to block profiles even before matching. They also have video chats so you can meet your match before meeting in real life. And Tinder wants you to feel comfortable. 1.5 million Tinder users go on dates in real life every week. Other apps are hard. Tinder is easy and fun. So go explore all the possibilities for yourself by downloading Tinder today. Tinder, it starts with a swipe. Okay. Back to the topic at hand. I am sick of y'all distracting me. Oh my God. So this one says POV, you catch a ghost staring. I'm like getting nervous. You catch a ghost staring at you while you're getting your gear on. <laughs> because of course, in any POV in the Call of Duty cinematic universe, you are in the military. Because why would you not be? They're not frequenting civilian bars. Okay. Now... It's hard for me to get in that mindset because, uh, no, I, I don't want to do that. Sometimes, oh my God, y'all, I've read some fucked up fan fictions <laughs> in my lifetime, in my time on God's green earth. I've read some fucked up things online. Okay. And I watched this one or not watched. Raven's distracting me. I'm literally like, okay. I read this one fan fiction one time when I was deep in my Narcos phase. <laughs> And for anyone who remembers that, y'all are troopers. And I'm so sorry for what it's worth. That was, but here's the thing. That was the genesis of my Pedrito era, okay? And this was like two, three years ago. And y'all bullied me for it. High school bullies. Y'all turned me into Gabby Hanna about it. These are high school bullies. I was so deep into my Pedro Pascal era and only a few of y'all understood, okay? Because The Mandalorian had just come out, like season one, I think season two was about to come out. Um, and then I realized, I was like, what else has he been in? And then I was like, oh my God, Game of Thrones. I remember him, but I I wasn't like an Oberyn Martell stan. And then I was like, Narcos looks tea. And I, I do kind of want to know more about Pablo Escobar. And so I was like, okay, I'll watch this. Narcos changed my life. I love that style of television is so good where it's like, it's based on real events and you can tell that the showrunner or the show creator really like 
had an interest in telling it as accurately as he could. But obviously, because it's TV, it's going to be dramatized and whatever. And it's also such a weird thing for the actors to play these, like, drug kingpins, you know, of, like, what a morally uh, uh, ambiguous sort of thing where you're playing this person and you want to do them justice by playing them, but also objectively what they were doing was bad. Um, and, and they killed so many people by proxy and uh it, it, narco trafficking is such a violent and tragic you know business but anyway <clears throat> i was i was like really invested I, I liked it for that reason and i liked all the actors who played you know the the main players and all these and whatever but pedro playing javier peña changed me as a woman okay i was so deep into my javier peña phase that I was like, I can't, I feel batshit crazy. Like, I feel like there's a screw loose somewhere. And that's kind of unrelated from me in my normal life. This was specifically a, a, a separate screw came loose watching Narcos. And so I was spam posting on Instagram about it every day. I was like, Javier Pena this, Javier Pena that, Pedro Pascal, whatever. People were like, who is that? And then, of course, everything came out with Last of Us and, and Mando season three and He's just exploded into this like S tier superstar now. And I'm so happy. But like I three years ago was like, oh my God, he's the one. And y'all were like, who's that? Whatever. So I was deep, deep on Tumblr and AO3 trying to find these goddamn Javier Pena, like your name, <laughs> Javier Pena X reader, like stories and I mean novels, because this is a, I don't want to read a one shot, bitch. I don't want to read a fucking one shot. I don't want to read something that you took 30 minutes to type up like three paragraphs. And it's like, and then happy ever after. I need the grit. I need the drama. I need the contrast. I want them to yell at each other and slap. No. And then they almost die. And oh my God. And then they're back together. And then, oh my God, I missed you so much. You know, that sort of shit. I need it. So I go on AO3 and I find Actually, no, no, I'm lying. My friend Caitlin sent me this. Caitlin, love you. Shout out. Um, and we became internet friends oh, through my DMs because she sent me something and I was like, I know this bitch gets it. I know this bitch gets it hard. She sent me some recs and I was like, holy shit. And I read this one. <laughs> I'm not joking. It is so, it is so like, who wrote this? So the main character is you, but you are uh, an operative Okay, like you work for the DEA and you're stationed in Colombia and whatever, they're hunting for Pablo Escobar and all this shit. Javier Peña is obviously your coworker. And you are, I think, um, the character in this one, they called her Ears because she was one of the people that like, because this is set in the 80s. This is set in the 80s. Um, she was one of the people that used to wear the headphones and like uh, decode um, like, like translate and like decode things that they would say over the radio frequencies and whatever, like calls between the patron and, and his, uh, kind of henchmen. And then she would write it down and report it to Javi and what's Javi's fucking partner's name? The hot blonde guy, Steve Murphy, Steve Murphy. Um, anyway, so she, she was that and they fall in love. She gets kidnapped, bitch. She gets kidnapped. And it's also like, I was reading this kind of like, this is fucked. Who is writing? Who is writing a fan fiction about like a real life historical event and like inserting yourself into it? I mean, I get it <laughs> from an artistic standpoint, but morally, does that piece of art need to exist? Does that piece of literature need to exist? Probably not. And I was like, Holy shit, how about they're reading this? I was like, what the fuck am I reading? Like, I felt bad. It's very well written, though. <laughs> and she would, like, incorporate Spanish. She was like, in the little author's note, she'd be like, I don't speak Spanish, but fuck me, I'm gonna try. And she would do, like, sh she would have her friends uh, check her Spanish <laughs> translations and, like, come up with, it was so, like, oh my God. And it was, like, 150,000 words. Like, it was so long. I don't even know if I finished it. And it was traumatic, and it was dramatic, and it was just, like, wow. Anyway, uh, that's what I'm reading. <laughs> AO3! That's the type of shit I'm into, okay? Oh, my God. Speaking of reading, 
Throne of Glass. I'm almost done with Tower of Dawn. And you bitches were right. It's good. Okay, fine. I hate to admit it. I hate to give y'all your flowers when you're right, but it's good. It's really, really good. And I'm I'm almost done with it. And then I'm gonna start Kingdom of Ash. And I've been so invested in this like Kale slash Nezrin slash uh, secret character um, timeline that I'm kind of like, I mean, I love Rowan and Aelin and I'm excited to read about them again because something traumatic happens at the end of book five that I, I want to know like what happens because it was a cliffhanger. But I'm kind of enjoying just this like Kale, even though I know I said three episodes ago, I don't give a fuck about Kale. My opinions have changed. He is a very complex character and I appreciate the depth that Sarah J Mass writes him in. Whatever. So I'm almost done with that. Hopefully by uh, next episode, I will be done with it and I will be starting Kingdom of Ash. So I will keep you updated on that front. But I think that's pretty much it. Other than if you guys wanted to watch some more Raven videos with me. Horny, 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 hot, sexy, horny. We need like a, I need one of those soundboards that like TMG or any of these podcasts have that's like a red alert. It's like an alarm. <laughs> <laughs> like this every time I get horny like like criminally horny this needs to go off and I need to be like the lighting needs to change needs to go red and we need to have like <laughs> it's led light. it's those tiktok led lights Vinny hacker comes in <laughs> it's Vinny hacker hour okay I just needed to I really wanted to touch on the guy at the beginning of the episode, the Inquisitor guy, because that video came on my For You page and I was like, not them knowing about me. And I just made this video and I woke up this morning thinking no one was even gonna see it. It's at a million views. Uh, why is it in a cage? Because it growled at me. <laughs> this has 360,000 likes. I didn't, stop. This was supposed to be my thing. I just have to make a burner, I think. I have to make a burner, but I'm terrified that you bitches will find it. We need to bring back Tumblr, dude. I'm sick of this. I need my anonymity. I need my anonymity so I can talk about this shit and be as gross as I want. And people can't be like, I'm 14. <laughs> yeah, bitch, I was too. And I saw Blue Waffle. I'm a minor. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> So with that being said, thanks so much for listening and watching team. Love you guys. Go watch Royal Court. Um, new episode comes out September 20th and you're going to like the guest. I'll just, uh, yeah, you're going to like the guest. So I'll just say that right now. Show. It's good. It was a really fun one to film. And uh, yeah, subscribe to this channel. Please rate this podcast five stars for the love of Christ. Okay, do you want me to die? No, then leave me five stars probably, okay? Because that's how these networks track us. They track us, dude. And if we need to be greenlit for another season because I have things to say and, and I have loyal people who need to hear them. So that's all. Love you guys. Go watch my YouTube videos. Don't go look at my TikTok because that is private for me and all 4.7 million of you, <laughs> but it's private. Okay. Love you guys. See you next week. Bye.